I think U.S. policy towards South Asia has been uh, governed by two super priorities of late. Uh, the first is dealing with the crisis in Afghanistan, and the second has been dealing with the terrorist threat to the United States that has some of its roots in South Asia. There is a broader policy vision for South Asia as well, and this has been the Obama administration's focus on the new Silk Road, thinking about how to better connect the countries of South Asia with each other and right through to Southeast Asia and up to Central Asia. But this is very much a vision anchored in economics. It's anchored in the way in which trade can potentially transform the region. I would argue that some of the policy communities dealing with South Asia have been relatively siloed alongside that. So the terrorism people don't necessarily really understand the India people well. And the India people may not necessarily understand the Afghanistan people. And those dealing with China are not necessarily connected in the ways that they should be with the people dealing with South Asia. I think the biggest challenge for the US over the coming decade is to forge a strategic Asia policy in which South Asia policy is an integral part. That's the long range vision that needs to inform the approach to the region. I think the second element is going to be uh, creating and sustaining a set of viable bilateral relationships between Washington and South Asian countries that will support US strategy and, and make a broader approach uh, possible. The other primary challenges that Washington will face are fairly obvious. Um, there's a challenge of uh, resolving Afghanistan and making sure that Afghanistan is a place of stability uh, and doesn't destabilize uh, the region. There'll be, of course, the continuing counterterrorism priority that the US will not want to see a threat to the homeland that emanates from South Asia. There's the opportunity presented by the US-India relationship. Uh, already a close and flourishing relationship, uh, there's an opportunity here to see how far that relationship can advance in future, both on the economic uh, agenda, where there's so much uh, inward investment flowing from India to America and from America to India, uh, but also on the political agenda. You know, how much can these two great democracies cooperate, not just on South Asian issues, but on a range of global issues as well? A trickier challenge, perhaps, will be Pakistan strategy. Yeah. There isn't really a Pakistan policy that everybody agrees on. And in fact, there are very different voices about how Pakistan should be approached over the next year or two. And I think that's an area where a lot more attention is going to be needed, not to then uh, reconnect or rehyphenate India and Pakistan, for example, or hyphenate Pakistan with Afghanistan, but to think in a clear-headed way about what US interests in Pakistan are and how they can be advanced both with the Pakistanis and with other partners as well. Well, I hope that the report will be of direct utility to the incoming administration in 2013. I'm not going to pretend that a report like this can transform policy making or is necessarily going to be the first document that an incoming uh, Secretary of State or Assistant Secretary of State will reach for on their desk. But I think part of what it can do is draw attention to the opportunity that South Asia strategy presents for a government in Washington and the importance of having a strategic long-range effort to forge a policy towards that region and a policy towards that region, as I mentioned before, that's connected to a broader Asia policy. There are also some very specific recommendations that the report will make. Um, some are almost bureaucratic. It's how can you enhance the capacity for strategic policy making in the uh, geographic bureau of the State Department. Some are functional on the grounds of expertise. You know, are there ways to foster better experts on South Asia within the State Department system? But some are broader brush. It's how can India be engaged at a senior enough level to show that Washington takes that relationship seriously? How can enough thinking be done about Pakistan to forge a new policy that can deliver for US interests? And how can a policy be framed that includes the smaller states of South Asia rather than simply having them as an afterthought?
There have been other reports on US policy towards South Asia, and many of them are excellent. I think what sets this report apart is a way in which it delves back to look forward. Uh, we've conducted over 80 interviews with a range of alumni of South Asia policy-making roles in the US government, dozens of former ambassadors, former White House leads on South Asia, former deputy under assistant and deputy assistant secretaries of state. And, and these are the people who made a policy towards Asia and who actually conducted business with South Asian states over the past 20, 30 years. Um, we've also looked at the archives. So by going through a range of declassified National Security Council and State Department papers on South Asia and oral histories of officials, we're able to construct, I think, a much deeper picture of how uh, the US has got to where it is today in terms of its approach to South Asia and draw some useful lessons from that about how the US could approach the region in future.